Hello guys, hope that you're doing well. In this Second Life video, I'm going to be giving you a quick and easy lighting tutorial with the updated environment editor settings for the Firestorm viewer. This was part of the environmental enhancement project, also known as EEP by Linden Labs, and was fully released in December 2020. This replaces Firestorm's wind light feature with new user interface panels and functionality and creates some really striking lighting effects for Second Life's sky, water and atmosphere. I'll be showing you some of the lighting that I recommend for photography and demo how you can have complete control using different visual effects. So if you're into Second Life Photography in 2021, it's really worth taking the time to get to understand this. There's some good tips that I can provide and I'll keep it as simple and straightforward as possible. To start off, I'd recommend that you save some of these tabs on your screen so you don't need to search for them in the menus. Really easy to do that, just right click the toolbar at the bottom of the screen and then click toolbar buttons. This will open up all of your available buttons and then just drag and drop the ones that you need onto the screen. So I've just added the environments button and now that's next to the photo tools, quick preferences and snapshot. And I'll explain how these work when I use them. So we're going to look at two main different ways of applying settings. The first is personal lighting, which means that you can set quick and temporary changes to your environment, regardless of where you are. These changes will only be visible to you. Nobody else will see them and they will disappear when you log out. The second way is fixed environments and that's when we want something more permanent and means that we can create and save our own presets to use later. What's really good about this is that they can either be applied just to yourself or to your parcel or land, meaning that others will see the same environment as you. So let's dive into personal lighting. The way to access that is either by going to world, environment and then personal lighting. You can also access it through quick preferences and photo tools, or there's a much quicker way, which is just to click the lighting tab in the top left of your screen. So this window has a few different sections, ambient color and density sliders, which sets the sky and cloud colors. Haze sliders adjust the haze and cloud effects. Scene gamma, which sets the overall brightness. Position trackballs to adjust the position of the sun and the moon to create some cool shadow effects. And then the glow and brightness sliders, which only affect the sun and stars. So you can see here that just by adjusting the sliders, we can start to create some variables with the lighting. And this is really just a case of experimenting with the visuals and trying out different combinations with the cloud and haze settings and gamma. And then just try modifying the colors and shades from the color palette to change the tone of the ambience and the horizon. And we can see here that these density color palettes can create an instant nighttime effect with twinkling stars. By clicking the yellow ball, the sun can be dragged around the globe, which casts shadows according to its position. The moon operates in a similar way. It's just really easy to move it around the sky with the blue ball and then use the arrows to fine tune the position. In addition to creating your own effect from scratch, you also have a library of 200 or so EEP assets by different providers. I've opened up my photo tools where I have access to all of my photo settings. We're only going to focus on the environment tab for this tutorial. So this region sky is currently set to the shared environment by the owner, which means anybody who visits here will see the same sky that I'm seeing by default. And I can hit the drop down menu to see and select any of the preset environments, or what I enjoy doing is just scanning through the environments by clicking the left or right arrow buttons. So this instantly changes the sky and we can start to see some really gorgeous backdrops. This one here I really like is called A6AM, which gives this stunning beach morning sunrise view, which glistens beautifully on the water in this sim. For the sea, I actually already changed to a preset, which is called Tor Impure, but we can cycle through some of the others and see how that changes the density, tone, and color of the sea. This one is called Tor Maldives, because I mean, who doesn't want to be in the Maldives right now? Sunbathing on a beach with a margarita cocktail. Yes, please. That would be an absolute dream. Now, if we wanted to set a fixed environment, which can then be saved as an EEP asset in your inventory, then we use a slightly different method. A fixed environment can either be created from scratch or created from existing presets. We're going to use the one from our library, we're going to modify it, and then we're going to save it as a new item. So we'll start with the sky. Firstly, find the environment from the library. I'm searching from my inventory, but you can also use the environments button, which we added earlier. So we've got the 6am preset and to edit this, we just need to copy it over from the library to our inventory. So just right click and then copy and then go to your inventory and paste it into the settings folder. Then right click and select only apply to myself if you want the preset to persist between sessions even after logging out. So now if we want to edit it, just double click and then a new fixed environment box will open. We've got more settings available with atmosphere and lighting, clouds and sun and moon. 
Similar to personal lighting, the haze settings will alter the brightness. And then we also have this cool ice level setting which creates this stunning rainbow halo effect. You've got more granular settings for the cloud compositions such as axis density and detail. And again, you can move the sun's position to create shadow effects. If the blue moon circle is greyed out, it means that the moon is behind the horizon. So all you need to do is just hold down the control button while dragging the ball and this will bring it to the front side. So once we're happy with our view, we just need to hit the save button and save as a new file name. So I've just added Boston edit to the wording so it's easy for me to find. Once it's been saved, the sky will appear in your settings folder and will appear in the drop down list of skies when you cycle through them. From the settings folder, you can just right click and then hit apply only to myself. To save water settings, just follow the same process as the sky, but choose your preset from the water folder in your library. With water, you can do stuff like control the motion and speed of waves, which is pretty cool, as well as the density, color, and texture of the scene. Now, if you're on your own land, the option to apply settings to your parcel will appear in the menu, and you can just click world, parcel details, environment to get into the finer custom settings where you can create day cycles and also set up to four different independently controlled sky layers. And with settings applied to your parcel, all visitors will share the same environmental experience. I may do a separate video on day cycles and parcel settings as it's a bit too much to cover in this video, and I just wanted to focus on the fundamentals to get you started. Hope that was useful guys, if you haven't done so already please remember to like and subscribe to my channel and I'll keep producing weekly videos to help you live your best second life. Take care, stay safe and see you soon.